day 159 of the Art Life video blog. My name is Christopher Michael Krett. I'm Jacob Wolf. Thank you, Christopher, for having me here today. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Art Life video blog. And uh, so, do you first of all, first off, want to tell us briefly about yourself? Uh, my name. Is it just for Michael? <laughs> um, sorry, said that. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I like to paint. <laughs> I like to travel. Um, I've been around the states. Uh, I've crossed them a few times, up and down, uh, left and right. Um, I like community. I like to. inspire a conversation, a dialogue, uh, thought, and introspection, um, empathy, uh, with a lot of my work. That's been a lot of the focus of what I, what I try to do. Um, and really, m my passion is painting. Uh, what do you consider your art style? Uh, I guess it would be in surrealism, pop surrealism is kind of a blanket term, but it might fit into that, but a lot of, I kind guess... Of like fantasy. Yeah, uh, fantasy definitely. I'm really influenced a lot by uh, children's books, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of always in my own little world, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, is that what inspired you at a young age to get into art was like children's books and um definitely i i had <clears throat> i had a really uh supportive environment um my mom she uh she took us out to do a lot of art just out in nature uh, we would go out to the dunes, or we would go out uh, to the forest, and we'd bring pastels and make stuff. And we were always making things. She wasn't an artist, but she just wanted to encourage that. Uh, so some of my first memories are making things, but she also had artist friends um, that were always uh, kind of there to inspire and, and help teach and guide. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as children's books, um, those are some of my tattoos I uh, cherish. I have a light in the attic uh, where the sidewalk ends and where the wild things are on my own. So, you know, yeah. I loved where the wild things are and where the, the sidewalk ends growing up. Like, very inspiring. Yeah, Shell's Overseen and growing up. Uh, Maurice Sendak, they, uh, I, it was hard for me to choose which cell Shell Overseen because I, I love so much of his work. Mm -hmm. And I actually, uh, I ended up writing a book as I moved to Portland, The Boy Who Chased the Sun. Um, <clears throat> but in November, I, I helped a friend, I illustrated The Groove Goblin uh, with Sapphire. Uh, Butch Leon and uh, yeah, we we had a really good time, and he wrote the story, and I look forward to actually doing more children's books. Right so, on. Yeah. How was uh, illustrating a story? Um, it was fun because Sapphire gave me a lot of room to roam. <clears throat> he uh, he had, you know, a few critiques here and there, but really he was really responsive to what I was doing and just wanted to allow me to uh, go with the story, and uh, it, it turned out really magical. So I'm really happy with how it turned out, and he's really happy with how it turned out, and uh, he's, uh, he's doing big things all the time, so um, he was talking about even uh, doing some reading, so I, I look forward to uh, seeing where that goes. And right on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so back to kind of beginning your art career. 
Um, how did people respond to your art right away? Like, what kind of stuff were you doing? Well, um, <clears throat> I guess I have always made something. As far as when I began uh, trying to capitalize on that, uh, I went to school for animation, uh, both 2D and 3D, and that was kind of the road that I had taken for trying to uh, make art my livelihood because I wanted to do something that I could make uh, art, but painting, although has always been a passion, it's not something that I saw as financially sound uh, for me to try to do as a career. Um, <clears throat> so I had always kind of done some of that, but I, I went to school for animation, did that, and I've, I've done a lot of animation in a lot of different types of styles. A lot of what I've uh, made money on is actually um, like industrial animation. So that was always, you know, put through the machine of, you know, it's like educational stuff. So it's put through the machine of uh, whatever job entity that goes through whatever critique process for that. So that was always kind of detached from my passion painting um, when I actually started doing that after I went to college and uh, you know, got a job doing animation. Um, that was something where I was doing it very much for me. And so when I started trying to show that work, um, it was very emotive. So I think that that a lot of people, it elicited a response. But a lot of what I was doing initially uh, was very tumultuous and very dark. And um, it would elicit a response. And a lot of people did respond really well to it. Um, <clears throat> but there were some heavy social commentaries and some pretty g graphic imagery. And it... Uh, wasn't something that I think was easy for people to live with. So it's not necessarily something that you would want to have around you all the time. Mm -hmm. Even if people were, at least to my face, um, having a, at least a, a, a response that I was looking for, you know, emo uh, emotion, thought, a dialogue, something like that, that's important. So I was, I was achieving those goals, but I have kind of changed a lot of my approach on that, um, which is a totally different story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so what you said it was a motive. Was that from the way you were feeling at the time, like um, personal life? Yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I have, uh, I've struggled with, uh, imbalances, uh, my entire life. Um, I was going through a lot at the time, uh, when I first started showing my art. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I graduated college, I bounced around uh, Europe for a bit, uh, trying to figure out what the fuck to do with myself after, uh, breaking up with somebody that I owned a house with and, like, was with for five years, and, um, <clears throat> that was, uh, I, that was very tumultuous, trying to figure out where to live and, uh, just trying to also be open to a bright future. Uh, but then uh, getting mixed uh, into the machine and then student loans were so crippling 
and that was a huge part of my life for a long time just uh, and they're still affecting me mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've found a lot more peace and a lot more uh, just um, yeah I, I've, I've come to peace with a lot of things and I'm really happy in a very simple existence. I've given up a lot of things. I, I try to live very minimalist. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I dealt with a lot of stuff in my own mind, but then also there was a lot of change just constantly in my own personal and professional life. Uh, for the past 10 years, um, yeah. Yeah. So when did you graduate college? Or actually, like, I, yeah, okay, so 2006. So, yeah. So, like, the last 10 years mm -hmm. has been pretty, <clears throat> pretty tumultuous. And I've been in Portland now, I guess it's uh, four years, something like that. Um, and I, Portland was a lot, uh, it, it had a lot to do with that. I really love Portland. I had been looking for a place that I actually felt at home and I felt really embraced by, uh, a really good community of artists mm -hmm. and that helped me a lot. And I, I really appreciate community. That's something that I really, um, although I'm a very solitary creature, um, I do appreciate people quite a bit. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm also very, you know, socially awkward. So it's hard <laughs> for me to always, uh, you know, communicate that yeah. to people. So, yeah. Um, so, after college, you started doing animation professionally? Yeah. Well, there was... Is that something that you still do? Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that you enjoy or just kind of pays the bills? It's something I enjoy. Um, a lot of what I've done, so I went right from college to teaching for a college, which, um, you know, for better or worse, taught me a lot. Um, and then I went and worked for uh, American Honda Motors and did, uh, like industrial animations, educational animation. And that seemed to have got me into a niche of doing more of that. Um, so I've done stuff for the, uh, <clears throat> the American Fruit Council and, uh, but just through different jobs. I worked for Fiction Tribe here, um, which is a creative agency. I worked for Convergence uh, Media, and they do a lot of educational uh, training for paper mills and that kind of thing. So what I was doing, I was learning a lot and working a lot with industry uh, professionals and engineers and technical writers and figuring out how to visually uh, tell these stories. And storytelling is kind of big in my world. I, mm. I love storytelling. So um, <clears throat> I do enjoy it on uh, a lot of levels. Mm. It's hard for me to be at a computer in a cubicle uh, for 40 hours a week or usually more. That's typically what most uh, of that requires. You know, they want 50, 60 hours a week most of the time. And I like to paint. I like uh, traditional mediums as well. So, so doing like animation in your spare time isn't something you're really interested in? No, no. I enjoy doing it. Um, and I will still be doing it. I, a year ago, like was when I stopped doing it, but it, it was 40 hours a week plus most of the time. So having this last year doing more traditional work where 
a lot of my work was fo focused on painting and murals and doing caricatures. Um, that was really satisfying for me and I think uh, I needed that and it helped me grow quite a bit because I, I think that a lot of times people are taught these uh, the software and not taught the basics of you know they may have been taught some design uh, principles but um, <clears throat> working with color working and being able to do that on a very just basic level of mixing pigments um, working with composition and uh, and even breaking those rules but um, <clears throat> they're not necessarily taught art a lot of the time. A lot of the time, uh, the people who are taught uh, animation and go into these fields, uh, a lot of the focus is on the technical. So they're graphic designers who know how to use uh, these animation programs where, uh, you know, I think that I needed that <clears throat> that time to really help refine my skills and bring those back that maybe I hadn't been putting as much focus on. Because uh, when I went through school, it was life drawing weekly, uh, several week or several days every week, we would have a class of life drawing. And that is so key, just having those basic fundamental skills so that you know how to make something look good through those programs. So, uh, but yeah, no, I like, I like animation and I will be doing more of that. Um, I, you know, I've, I've bid jobs, uh, fairly recently. Um, I want to put more of my focus though on, uh, the creative side of that. And that could even still incorporate, I think the, uh, <clears throat> the learning animations, uh, the instructional animations, which I think there is a huge need for, um, especially with so many innovations going on all the time. But um, if I were able to do that in a creative way, I think that could be a lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since you started showing your work after college up to like now, how has your art changed? Um, I <clears throat> definitely was more focused on, okay, a, a lot of my stuff was more emotive, um, and a lot of it was a social commentary, whereas, uh, and a lot of my colors were very uh, subtle. I worked in oil a lot of the time, um, and I used a lot of earth tones. Um, <clears throat> since coming to Portland, um, you know, 10 years of painting and showing and whatnot, um, I've, I feel like I've honed in on certain styles and then maybe let go of some of those and incorporated new parts of styles and um, my color palette has definitely evolved to be a lot brighter. I still uh, like to incorporate uh, the earth tones uh, and subtlety and texture uh, and lots of subtle layers uh, which has been <clears throat> a tough road figuring out with acrylic from uh, oils, mm -hmm. which I, I I like doing a lot more wet into wet painting. Um, but uh, yeah, so color palette is definitely a lot brighter. Uh, and the social commentary, I am trying to focus more on, um, you know, even these are from 2014 and, um, you know, like this one, it's, it's a whole lot brighter, um, and I, I want to try, at least, uh, to focus a little bit more on um, inspiration instead of critiquing, because um, I think uh, you, can, you can inspire more change through, you know, 
providing the inspiration to do so instead of a pointing finger kind of a thought, you know, be the change you want to see, I guess. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, where are you showing right now? Uh, okay, so I have some stuff. I, I have a piece at the Good Foot. Um, that's been somewhere that I've shown pretty consistently uh, since I got to Portland. Uh, though I'm trying to back off of doing so many shows, and I didn't have any shows lined up at all this year. But a friend of mine asked me to show at NWIPA, uh, which is on Foster and like 60 something. It's right across from Bar Carlo. Okay. And um, it uh, will be on February 20th. And uh, that's also uh, a night of another show, which is going to be awesome, but I can't. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a decent show. I've got a few more pieces that I'm working on and a really big piece. It's eight foot. Uh, and the base, it, I believe it's about four and then it tapers up to about three feet. And I'm using a lot more spray paint. And that's also another way that uh, my art has been evolving. Just different mediums, but I really enjoy spray paint. So, um, yeah, just a moment. Uh, Sam? Uh, no. Is Sam Arneson? Uh, yeah, he, he lives here. They dropped it off at my house. Oh, wow. Accident. Okay, that's the second one today. No, Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. All right. Mail to the wrong house. We have, uh, we, we've had our mailman change recently. It, it's been, uh, it's been in flux, so we have different mail people all the time. Now, so. You have nice neighbors because I'm still missing some packages that were supposed to arrive around Christmas. Oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, we're, we're pretty grateful. We, uh, we have a decent little neighborhood here, so. Yeah. But I, I'm sorry, what, uh, what were you talking about? Um, we were talking about where you're showing right oh. now. Um, maybe projects that you're working on, stuff that you're... Ex oh, and you were talking about paintings, the eight-foot painting. Yeah, it's in the back. Um, it's actually been sitting out in the rain. <laughs> and I've just been... Uh, I just recently uh, kind of put more work into it, so I started putting it uh, under a tent. But, um, yeah, that one, uh, it will be done, and I have a few new ones that I had been working on, uh, before, uh, the new year, and I'm trying to take, just finish all the paintings that I, I have done, and then be very intentional about the paintings that I'm going to be doing in the near future, because, um, I get in this thing where I start a dozen paintings and then I feel like I have to uh, crank them all out. And, uh, but yeah, uh, so <laughs> NWIPA will have some new stuff and then uh, Matt and Emily and Jen and uh, I feel like I'm, I'm missing someone. Matt, Emily, Jen, and Allie. Uh, we're going to be showing at the Ford Gallery uh, sometime in March, I believe, the end of March. Right on. So, yeah, and I think it'll be uh, tied in with one of their, uh, they have like a, a magazine and uh, poetry reading and like music thing that they do, so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you were talking about your books, uh, your children's book, books, but you also just released a new one, right? I did. Um, it's, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So this is actually the book I released, uh, just shortly after coming to Portland and it's a collection of my old stuff, which has a lot more, uh, of the subtle tones and whatnot. Um, and that one I am going to make out of print. Uh, because I just finished up this one. Uh, and so this one was Incoherent Insight, 
and I feel like I've been going through a lot of change and um, uh, trying to find clarity and so I feel like that is slowly coming um, and this one is called Clarity Emerging so um, it's not that any of my work is like this is a specific series um, but they do have a tendency, there's certain ones that show together even if they're not necessarily painted at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, this is a, a collection, it's 40 pages, um, all color, and there's over 60, I think there's 65 paintings in here. Wow. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. That's incredible. Where can people get a hold of that? Uh, that's a Amazon. Uh, you can just go to Amazon, or uh, you can go to my website, I guess, preferably, uh, is ChristopherCreth.com. It's like breath. But with a C. Yeah, with a C. So. Right. And then um, you said this one you're putting out of print? Uh, yeah, that one I will probably be putting out of print next month. Um, I'm going to mention it online. Um, I'm not great about online promotion. I kind of uh, feel weird about doing it, which mm -hmm. I need to get over. But um, but yeah, uh, I want to make that available. It's not really uh, what I'm doing anymore, so it's not. I feel uh, representative of you know the the portfolio that I'm I'm wanting to put out to the world. So. Mm -hmm. It was a limited run, and, and people were able to get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. You should get a hold of one before next month. <laughs> um, and your other books, your children's books, are available through your website as well? Yeah. yeah. The Groove Goblin and The Boy Who Chased the Sun. And this one actually has its own website. And if you go on there, it's a flash file, so your iPhone won't read it. But... Um, it, I'll read to you, and you can even hear the pages turning. Not <laughs> me. <laughs> um. So, what are some of your goals for the future? What are some of your plans? Oh uh, wow. Um. You know, <clears throat> I used to have a uh, more solid idea of what I, the direction that my life would take, and that has just really never, <laughs> <laughs> ever it worked out. It doesn't go that way. So, um, truthfully, uh, I have general ideas of the direction that I want to take my life, but I'm trying to be open to uh, what the future holds, because um, most of the time, the direction that I push, it's just like a general direction, but the opportunity comes from over here in some land that you didn't even know, wouldn't have even thought to imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm trying to be open to that, but for now, um, I really, the last year I've done a lot of events and going and doing caricatures and selling my art directly um which i actually have had a really surprisingly good experience with um i like being outside that was a big difficulty for me at a desk job um and i like interacting with people uh, uh when they are in a good space to interact with. I'm not, um, I, I feel like, uh, <clears throat> okay, I guess doing caricatures, I am providing a service, but most of the time that is smiles and laughing. Mm -hmm. That's those types of interactions I can take all day. Mm -hmm. So, totally. yeah, so it's not like I'm, I'm doing like a, a service job in a, a, a typical service job sense, mm -hmm. but it's a, the interactions are typically really pleasant and um, people are just stoked on what you're doing and 
you get to be outside, and I, I love all of those things. Uh, so I was doing a lot of that, um, and then, you know, sometimes the event, it didn't suit, caricatures didn't suit it, so I would sell my art, and, um, you know, just try to figure out, you know, if I'm doing a book fair, uh, maybe I'm going to bring my books, and I'm going to do caricatures. Mm. Uh, whereas if I'm doing an art fair, it could be a toss-up. Um, I'll probably bring some of my art, but still set up to do caricatures, because people just enjoy that experience. Right. So, um, going to school for animation, um, that's exaggeration, and uh, caricature in general is just something that I've always had a lot of uh, interest in and has influenced my art. Um, I don't really work a lot from picture reference to try to capture it completely. Uh, I want to take a, a picture reference or like a, a physical reference in front of me and uh, exaggerate it to something that I, uh, you know, it just, it's more pleasing to me at the very mm -hmm. least. Yeah. So. Um, are your paintings available on your website as well? I recently put up a few. Um, I just, so I had different websites. I had brownbagstudios.com and uh, Catastrophe, it's a catastrophe with an R at the end, dot com. And uh, Catastrophe was my fine art or my paintings. And then Brown Bag was what I was getting jobs with, uh, with animation. They were compartmentalized. Uh, but recently, I'm consolidating them to ChristopherKreff.com, and I'm going to be having uh, Brown Bag Studios and Catastrophe point to that one, because uh, I'm just wanting to consolidate mm -hmm. and make things more streamlined. And yeah, I, I actually recently uh, set up a shop, so that prints are available, uh, my books are available, and there are some originals right now. Um, I'm going to be uploading more stuff soon, as well as uh, I will be uh, putting different events where you can actually come see more of the bigger stuff, because some of the stuff just can't be shipped. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was a gallery that I put on every once in a while. Uh, it's called the 4th F and Friday Gallery. Okay. And generally it's, no, it's always on the 4th Friday of the month, but, uh, I haven't had one in a while. I'm gearing up to do two. Okay. Uh, one is for some of the more recent artists that I've interviewed, and it's a little bit smaller. It's going to be at my house, and, uh, the other one will be much larger um, and I had a venue and it fell through and I'm searching for another one right now but it'll be all of the artists that I've interviewed in the past like year and a half get an invite to come show uh, art and be a part of it and I always provide at my house at least like free beer food um, there's live music and we paint on the walls and go crazy uh, we do a little raffle so um, if anybody wants, any of the artists that are showing want to donate a small piece into the raffle, uh, and then anybody that comes in uh, can donate five dollars or more to the Art Life Video Blog and the gallery, and they get a raffle ticket. And at, like the very last thing we do, the big hurrah is a raffle, and everybody gets really inexpensive art, but like Portland art, like fine art. Uh, from all, all different sorts of people and mediums and uh, it's a lot of fun and people come and stay for that a lot of times. Sorry, I have a sneeze lingering. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds interesting. I'm definitely interested, but I, I uh, think it's going away now. <laughs> that's good. Uh, and then the bigger one, uh, like I said, will be a lot more artists, a lot more people. Uh, I don't have dates yet, but I'm hoping to announce 
both soon. Um, there's still some variables on both events that I'm trying to sort out. But that's monthly? Uh, it was monthly for a while, and then I started taking a month break in between, and then the last one I did was in October. Okay. But it's just kind of been... I, I've been pushing it back just because I've been, like, really trying to plan for this big one. Yeah. Um... I do, um, I like the idea, um, I, I would like to take part in something that, uh, definitely has, uh, <clears throat> if it has, you know, if it's intentional and there, it has some forethought, yeah. uh, definitely let me know the details. And, I uh, sure will. Absolutely. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, so, I keep saying this everybody, but soon I will be announcing details for these, it's coming. <laughs> um, do you have any last questions, concerns, thoughts? Um, okay. <laughs> just, you know, be good to one another. Yeah. It's really been a pleasure, Christopher. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Art Life Video Blog. Day 159, I think we said. Check them out. <laughs>